and they love it like if it's a person, but it's in the end it's an object. And I think uh, companies like Apple have excelled in these kind of things. Uh, uh, maybe Japanese companies could catch on in the future to try also uh, to use uh, or see how design influences emotions in consumers and maybe compete in the future. I think. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for your presentation. I really appreciate you to see a response to my question. So let me ask one thing about from chapter three. So you classify the conflict developed country and developing country. Um, have you got any idea to another classification related to the market share? Another classification besides uh, uh, besides uh, developed and developing countries. Um, mm, I, no, to be honest, not. I basically thought... Uh, how about the oligopolistic situation? Only the policy situation of market share. Mm -hmm. Maybe some industry uh, occupied by two or two companies. Yeah, I, I, I agree. High share. It it could it, it could be true. It it would be another way of classifying the companies. But uh, I think you will also uh, well, I will I I will be also face the problem. Uh, we will have a duopoly, for example, in the case of Japan, of China which are state-controlled companies. So in that sense, I should also try to find another country that has these types of characteristics to make the comparison. At least I will face that kind of limitation. And I think this classification of developed versus developing countries, it, it, it kind of the, disregards these characteristics, but it could be used to, uh, to disentangle this possible effect. Because I think thinking about duopolis or oligopolies will have this problem, this particular problem. Because for example, China being a huge market, has very few industries that are state controlled. So, to what other country can I compare that? So, uh, I will have some kind of misleading, probably misleading results. And I think it, it, this classification was was correct, but not, not, not correct, but at least help. But I think you could also, I could also think in other kinds of classifications, but at least I, I went with that one. Okay, and another question from the chapter four. Uh, especially for the figure 4.4, degree of uncertainty avoidance by occupation. Mm -hmm. Occupation shows only the significant difference for the uncertainty avoidance with the uh, Can you repeat again, please? What, what page? The, uh, page number 62. Uh -huh. The figure of degree of UA by occupation. Ah, okay. <coughs> so how about the situation in other countries? Ah, uh, the situation by country. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Have you already uh, the situation or not? Mm, no, I, I basically concentrated on... Of course, it has nothing to do with this dissertation, but... <coughs> mm, I, at least I think uh, I will expect similar results. Mm -hmm. Similar results because uh, when you are a public servant, at least in my country, thinking as a Bolivian, I think uh, you would not, not want things to change because you, you depend to, to a bureaucracy. So you want, it to, you want it to stay in that way. But when you are an entrepreneur, you like to uh, try new things, to try new businesses. And I think that's the main characteristic of any business, businessman. Businessmen in general, uh, or managers, they are willing to try new things. And may, maybe the best proof of that would be Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley in the United States is characterized by this high rate of uh, new entrepreneurs are generally trying new and new products and it responds to this kind of need. But of course, uh, in the case of people from the government, they generally are bureaucrats and they will not want things to change and I would expect similar results. And let me give you a small comment about the figures in chapter 6 and chapter 7 about the SCM. In some figures, you derive the big statistics. In the name of big statistics, you derive the value of CFI or RMCA. Mm -hmm. But in another figures, you use the word big indexes. Ah, okay. And then some other videos, uh, lack of such kind of information. Ah, okay. I think it would be better to keep consistent. Ah, okay, thank you. 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 What happens 
if you include Arabic countries in your research? Uh, for, in, in the overall research, you mean what chapter is uh, it? Let's say chapter three. In chapter three. Mm -hmm. um, at least, uh, if I think in Arabic countries, I will think about religion, first of all. I will think they're Muslim, therefore they will have higher uncertainty avoidance. And I will expect, probably in the case of chapter three, that the uh, uh, case of uncertainty avoidance, uh, chapter three, market share. Uh, in the case of market share, I think it's an it is under, underdeveloped country. Therefore, I will maybe expect a positive correlation. That the, this is a positive correlation. Therefore, again, being a not competitive industry, maybe it's working under for health conditions. And it's negative correlation, not positive correlation. At least we may have a hypothesis if I include that type of data. Thank you. <laughs>